Hello! Welcome to the first ever video review of The Bachelor with uh, Stacy B. and the husband. Welcome! So, who are we? Why are we here? Why are we doing this? Just wanted to introduce myself face to face. I'm Stacy B. and I have a blog called I Love the Bachelor Bachelorette. It's located at bachelorlove.blogspot.com. But most likely, if you're watching this, you already know that. You do kind of stink a little. <laughs> I do. A little bit. I just went to the gym today because we had 19 inches of snow. We're located in New York City. We're sitting in our apartment. No makeup. No fancy airs about us. Um, we're just going out of our mind with cabin fever because we can't get out of here. Yeah, it's a little crazy. So I decided to go to the gym and now I stink. <laughs> it's a good stink though. But back to my point, why are we here and why are we doing this? I am just a humongous fan of the show. Um, I've been watching it since the very first season with Alex and fell in love with Trista being the first Bachelorette and from there I've just been completely obsessed. Um, and this is my husband who now I forced to watch with me. I kind of reluctantly got roped in. I mean, but, but now that I'm like two or three seasons in, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in. He's in. He um, loves it. It's good. It's I, addicting. I cry sometimes. This season of The Bachelor um, was pretty controversial. They brought back Brad Womack, who, as we all know, was previously a Bachelor. But I think he's doing a good job at uh, making people think that he deserves a second chance. What do you think? Uh, I missed him the first time, but, uh, I mean, I agree. Uh, he seems like he's a good dude. A little monotone. Uh, but it seems like he's deserving of a second chance, and he's, and he's taking it, uh, the bull by the horns, and, and running with it, and doing quite well, I might add. I mean, this season, I think we talked about this, we have, we have a podcast that we do too, which you can listen to, and we'll direct you to that. But, uh, I mean, this season, it's like every single girl is a Victoria's Secret model, which makes it... I mean, not uh, every girl, but a lot well, of them. Almost all of them. They're it, really hot. It makes it very difficult hot to tune ladies. in. <laughs> so, one of the exciting opportunities that I have had as a blogger is I do every Saturday a weekly review. I am the TV couch critic for RBR.com, which is the Radio Business Report. And my TV review basically gives me an opportunity to interview one eliminated contestant from the show each week. I post these interviews on my blog, but this week we had an extra special surprise because the person was... Chris Harrison. Chris Harrison. So even though I have a regular job, I commute like hours and hours a day to my job. I wake up at 6 in the morning and I sit in an office all day and I do my regular job. People don't know this about me. I get to interview people like Chris Harrison. I'm, re I'm, I'm retired, so don't work. <laughs> He's retired. I'm totally jealous. Um, but anyway, we have some exciting news that came out of Chris Harrison today that we learned. Just wanted to share it with you. What do you think? I think he, he said some pretty uh, interesting things. Uh, for instance... For instance, um, we asked him or somebody else on the call, because this is a press conference call, lasted about an hour, asked him about upcoming on Monday, we got a preview that there was going to be some car racing as part of the group date. And who gets picked to be on this car racing date? Emily. Emily! I mean, how do they do this to this poor girl? We see her pour her heart out. The tragic story of her former fiancé gets killed in a plane crash. It turns out he's like a famous car racer from the Hendrix family. Terrible. Devastating. And what do they do to her? They put her on a freaking car racing date. Terrible. It's, it's pretty terrible. So we well, ask yes, Chris Harrison, why on earth would you do this? I mean, really, it's just nasty and mean. And what did he say? Uh, he said that it was uh, it was arranged, the date to go to the car race was arranged way before Emily was even taken. Before she was cast before in. she was cast in the show. So. so they already had that set up before they even met Emily. But, okay, so now they know that Emily has this tragic background relating to car racing. Why would they make her go on a date like that? Uh, you know, because it's TV. And it'll get people to be like, oh my god, this woman's ex fiance died in a horrible plane crash and he was a car racing driver. Like, you know, what's she going to do? Like, Chris actually said that the producers got together and they said, look, we've never really had a situation like this before. They could approach Brad and tell him what was going on or they could tell Emily and give her the option of what she wanted to do. But 
in Bachelor style, they decided to do nothing and let real life play out. Did I just feel a rumble on the couch? I just farted. <laughs> in our first ever review, I passed some wind. And I apologize. Unbelievable. He's not sorry. <laughs> The other thing that Chris Harrison revealed to us today, there's a rumor circulating that he may be, he was asked to take over for Regis Philbin, who's retiring this year, on the live show with Regis and Kelly. Now, personally, I find Regis, you know, he's okay. More annoying than him was Kathy Lee Gifford, but Chris Harrison is an amazing host. Um, probably more amazing as The Bachelor than a new Regis, but... You know, he was, I asked him, what are the chances? Are we going to lose you to that show? And what did he say? He said that The Bachelor and The Bachelorette are his number one priority. Which is good news for us, because losing Chris would be a huge loss. Well, who else is going to come out and tell us that there's only one rose left? I mean, really. <laughs> who else is going to say, should you decide to forego your individual rooms, please stay together as a couple in our fantasy suite? <laughs> yes, I have that memorized, although I don't know why. You asked him another very interesting question, I thought, which goes back to last year when, like, the girl accused him of, like, trying to hit on her Rosalind. or whatever. But he was a very cool customer about it. The way he treated the whole situation was very professional. Yeah, I mean, I, I basically said to him, I think that Chris is one of the huge um, reasons why this show has been so successful. I mean, it's been, like, 15, 16 seasons already, and... He really analyzes it and takes it seriously. He brings a certain class to a show that could otherwise be viewed in the Jerry Springer category. And I asked him, you know, what did I ask him? <laughs> oh, you, you, you just asked, like, I don't know what you asked him. Well, I basically said that I was impressed with how he handled situations such as the Rosalind Papa situation. You know, how do you take that kind of heat from a girl who's really nasty to him and just handle it so wonderfully you know he, he was polite he didn't he didn't like yell at her he didn't get nasty back oh god stop it <laughs> sorry rumbling on the I, couch i had a torta for Disgusting. Uh, for lunch it was a mexican sandwich <sighs> so i sorry. basically asked chris um if he if, if viewers would be satisfied with the outcome of the show and what he said was brad will be satisfied i got the feeling i don't know if we're necessarily all as viewers going to be satisfied but he says, the audiences are usually, I don't know, it's hard to predict what they're going to think of the outcome of the show. So I guess we have to wait and see. Uh, maybe we should talk about some of the crazy things that happened on the last episode of the show. Uh, I would say the first thing was Michelle's black eye. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am come from the camp of people that think that she gave herself this black eye. I mean, she's an actress. She's good with makeup. Who gives themselves? Who, yeah, who, gets a, who wakes up with a black eye? Unless you, you have mean some she crazy crushed dream. herself. Yeah, she had a crazy dream where she was, like, fighting herself and, like... It's an like, internal struggle. I don't know. It's a little fishy. I do have a friend. My friend Amina emailed me today because she was reading my blog when I was discussing Michelle's black guy. And she said she once got so drunk, like, the night before a corporate event, and she woke up the next morning and she had a black eye and she doesn't know where it came from. Wow. So maybe it's just, like, a drunk, like, tired thing. I well, don't my know. second theory is that sweet, sweet Emily did a number on her in the middle <laughs> of the night. It's very possible. It is possible. Um, the other thing we should definitely talk about is the chemistry between Chantel and Brad. Uh, people are saying it's palpable. Like, they have just which as one, much... Which one is Chantel? Chantel's the gorgeous one who works for her dad, who has a lot of cats, and it went on the first one-on-one -on -one date last week with Brad, and they went underwater together. Oh, and she, she slapped him the very She beginning. slapped him when she got out of the limo the first night. Okay. Um, Chantel is gorgeous, drop dead gorgeous. Um, she also seems to finally be able to voice her opinion about Michelle. I think that that's actually going to escalate in the episodes ahead. Um, but they're saying they're comparing the chemistry between her and Brad as the chemistry that was seen between Allie and Roberto. Oh. Speaking of Allie and Roberto, Chris Harrison said that they are still very much together and they're happy. He wouldn't comment on whether they had set a wedding date because he said that was really like their news to share. So it sounds like that might be on the works. And he also said that he really hopes that they do their, te their wedding on television. Yeah, stay tuned. Stay uh, by the way, also, I think that was one of the coolest things when they, when they do the, it's like scuba diving without having to like learn how to scuba dive. Like yeah. you just walk with like... The suits underwater, that was, that's pretty cool. I would yeah. certainly do that. I don't know if I would do it in the East River here in New York, because you just see a bunch of dead bodies, but but out in California, definitely. <laughs> um, 
All right, one other thing worth mentioning uh, coming up this week, we're going to see the first two-on-one, the famous two-on-one date with Brad. He is going out with the Ashleys, and he's going to have to pick one and dump one. Ooh. What do you think he's going to do? Uh, it would help if I knew which Ashley was which. But he's taking both Ashleys? Both Ashleys. It's Ashley S and Ashley N. The one that sang Kiss from a Rose. And the dentist and the... And the dentist. Okay. The dentist and the dentist? No. Oh, the dentist and the baby or the nanny. Oh, the nanny or the dentist. Well, clearly you take the nanny. She was sweet. And she reminds me of Kelly Pickler. Uh, it's going to be tough because we saw kind of in the last episode that Ashley, the dentist, started having signs of, like, freaking out. Is that right? Is that fair? Ashley was completely freaking out. She was starting to freak out. And then I think in the preview for the next episode, they're just showing her kind yes. of ha the having those meltdowns. The best part of last week's show, and ah. in the entire season, in my opinion, Ashley was freaking out. She, like, needs reassurance. She's talking about Brad, like, being really nice to the other girls. She's, like, freaking out. And she goes, she's like, you know what? I'm going to go talk to Brad. And she goes over to him, and he is like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> With right. Brit, that was awesome. <laughs> so was awesome. Good. That is why. That is classic Bachelor. That is why we love the show. That's another, but that brings up another thing, which is I kind of feel like there's a clear case there where, you know, two people are having a great conversation. They're making out. They're getting to know each other. And then I'm, it's got to be a producer who grabs the next girl and is like, go, 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 get up there. Yeah. It's your turn. Go, quick. I don't think that The Bachelor is allowed to say no to anyone that initiates a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him. Because right. Because you never see The Bachelor say, hold on, I need five more minutes. Right. Like, oh, I just sat down. Yeah. But that's interesting. Um, <laughs> some newsworthy items that we know about. Coming up on Monday, I think it's at 7 o'clock for all you guys that are in the New York City area, Dave Good, who was on Jillian's season initially and then came back to win Bachelor Pad, has a new book out called Man Code. And he's doing a book signing and he is hosting a screening of The Bachelor when it's on live from 8 to 10 at uh, the Village Poor House. So if you're in the New York City area, come check it out. He will be speaking about, you know, who's Man Code and who's not Man Code. I, I don't really get it, but... You know, and if you do go there, just definitely order the poor chips. Uh, they're uh, <laughs> what are poor chips? They're, they're smothered in like cheese and bacon and everything wow. that the demographic that watches The Bachelor is craving right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, some other newsworthy things. Michelle is all over the press, or, or stories about Michelle. There's rumors going around that she had an affair with a married man whose wife was like dying of cancer. All these crazy things. Is someone calling you? I'm putting on vibrate. Um, there's rumors that she was going out with some real estate agent in Utah. I have a lot of hits on my blog from Utah, so I, and, and people are posting comments that claim that they personally know Michelle and she's a home wrecker. All these terrible things. I don't know if they're true, but you know, I personally don't write these things. So anyone sending threatening mail to me, I mean, I don't know what to tell you except don't read the blog. Uh, you know, I'm not writing it. Um, there's also people that are advertising on my blog saying that if people have news about Michelle that they're willing to pay for it. So I don't know who those people are. It's like Star Magazine or who knows who they're writing for. But um, just check it out. Check it out, the blog and all the gossip going on. What else we have today? Anything? What else? No, not much. Um... It's still snowing, or actually it stopped snowing, and last night we were supposed to go out for dinner with my Aunt Harriet. She wanted us to come to her apartment and help her move a printer from the bedroom to the living room. And for some reason, we decided that we didn't feel like going there to well, do a, that. A blizzard was there going There was a blizzard. So that kind of helped. Yeah. But maybe uh, tonight or next week? Yeah, maybe. If anyone is good at moving a printer and wants to hang out with Aunt Harriet tonight... Well, we won't give out her information. Yeah. I think that's it for our first ever video show review yeah. of The Bachelor. Um, if you guys have questions you want to ask us, please ask away. Come to the blog and uh, post your comments. Uh, we're going to be hopefully doing some more interviews in the next couple weeks from people that get booted from the show. So if you have questions that you want us to ask those people, feel free to post those as well. Uh, I guess that's really it for now. If I decide to do this again, I will shower and maybe put on makeup, so I apologize in advance for my appearance. And I will take some Gas-X. Hopefully.
<laughs> I'll put some deodorant on. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Bye. Bye.